I am continuously saying that I need to do more BOA videos. There's not enough BOA content on YouTube. And while yes, there's plenty out there, I wanna add to that. And most of my stuff is, mo is fairly informative, talking about different classifications, finding them in the wild. Well, today, I just wanna just show off some of my really cool animals. So today, I'm just gonna be showing off a few of my BOAs. I won't be doing any of the true constrictors because that'll be a whole other series of videos and stuff, but I just wanna show off some of my BOAs today. And so to start things with off, what is arguably my most handleable, tolerant, friendly snake, Pi. Pi here is a coral sun glow boa. So she's the call line and then the hypo, so the hypo sun glow. She comes from a line that has really high pinks. Nothing compared to like what some people are working with or what corals and lipsticks to a, another point are also used to be, but she is still very high pink. If you come over here, you can look even as an adult, small, but an adult, she has quite a bit of pink on her around her head and around her neck. And then the other thing you'll notice is that you probably would have seen something by now is if you look at her face, it looks like it's swollen. Well, what that is actually is scar tissue. So what happened was when I decided, okay, I'm going to be doing a little bit better for all of the animals. And I added a bunch of new substrate to all the ones that may or may not have been on paper here or there, bringing them up into larger enclosures, larger racks and tubs. They fogged up a lot of humidity when you put in the new coconut and it got kind of foggy. She hit the front of it, broke a tooth and it started to get a bit of an infection. And so even though we caught it very early and we treated it with antibiotics and everything like that, it still developed into scar tissue because the mouth is a very sensitive part of their body. So now she's entirely healthy, never had an issue eating to begin with, but she's perfectly healthy, but scar tissue still did build up. So she's always gonna have this kind of like little, almost like a duck bill looking kind of face, as well as when we did try to put her back in coconut, it started to impact a little bit on there too. So unfortunately she is one of the animals that is always gonna end up being on paper, but because of that, her interactions and her enrichments are now going to be me physically taking her out, just like with Yang, the reticulated python, and that's their enrichment. And it helps that they're more tolerant and they seem to actually enjoy the interaction. And this is the animal that very frequently I bring out as someone who is just starting to get to the idea that snakes aren't scary. So I'll start off with like a little baby ball python, like a bell or a highway or something like that that doesn't even look real. And then as we slowly move up, we graduate to a larger snake, Pi here, that is, in all honesty, like just the sweetest little baby snake ever. Yes, you are. I love you so much. But I'm just going to keep showing off a few other This animals. is Delta or D. No, that is not named after the Velociraptor from Jurassic. What are you doing, you silly girl? From Jurassic World, that is going off of my theme of all of the different Greek numerals. So that's why Pi is actually a Greek numeral. Numeral? Numeral? I'm bad. But Pi, Rho, Delta, Alpha, all of them, they're that particular theme that I started with. Delta is a Harlequin Motley Boa, and she is het and pos het for like everything under the sun. Reverse stripe, full stripe, square tail, Poshet Annery, and I think she might be Poshet called too. I can't remember. I need to go find her card. But she's Poshet and hat for a lot of different things. This is an amazing little snake, and I like the Motley gene. I just don't work with it too much. But if you look, she is like the Harlequin just kind of cleans everything up and makes the Motley just absolutely explode. And so we actually very specifically waited for her. Most of her litter went almost a month before she was available. She was having just trouble eating consistently. She was still eating, but she wasn't eating with every offering. And a lot of times with boas, myself included, I want to make sure that a lot of people do three to five meals. I do 10 plus meals of consistent every time I offer it. That's what's going. And so that's what D here is. She is an amazing, amazing animal. She's very personal. She has a funky little personality. And this coming fall is when I might actually try breeding her for the first time this year. As there she goes, every single bow, they always go for my head. Uh, DH is the worst. But uh, we'll be probably pairing her with Maine, our male moon glow, to see whether or not it proves out the head anery as well as maybe the head call. We'll see. If not, We'll also find out whether or not Maine is in fact a super ghost because he is a probable super ghost. Hi, D. So we'll be getting potentially all hypo, half motley, and then a bunch of, at the very least, 50-50 head 
Annery call albinos. I love this little girl. She's so cool. I love the motley gene, but again, super motley is that's that fatal gene, so I'm not gonna be doing any other animal, any other male boas paired with her with that motley gene. So despite the fact that she is in deep shed, this is Kilo. She is our VPIT positive boa. She's a possible jungle. Talk about in that just a second. But this is, as a lot of people, especially when they very first start getting into them, they think you can't handle a snake while they're in shed because they're more reactive and they don't know what's going on. Well, this is what I can tell you, where I still will probably limit it a fair bit. An animal, when it's used to you, will still be okay because it trusts that you're not going to eat it, which is what that is. They're scared that you're going to eat it because we're giant Godzilla monsters to them. So the reason why I say that, and unfortunately she, she just glows, but she is in shed, but I'm still gonna show off how still pretty she is. The reason why I say she's a possible jungle, jungle is very famous for that crazy aberrant pattern that happens on Boa's saddles, right? Well, turns out that just like with Colin and a lot of other things, when we started breeding them into other morphs and started breeding them extensively, every animal that threw color, that threw the gene, or even showed any amount of expression, we just started calling jungle, we started calling coral, we started calling lipstick, instead of specific animals that in fact had those traits that were that. So a long time ago, if you bred a jungle animal and you got some with this aberration, and then some with just kind of weird saddles, this would be a jungle and the rest wouldn't. But because of that, now we're not quite sure whether or not that gene is being thrown because we just have a lot of crazy low expression animals. So despite the fact that she in fact probably is a jungle, we can't call it that, so we just say possible or probable. She's that VPIT positive, so what that means is that that tyrosinase is present because when it comes to albino reptiles specifically, there's more than just melanin as far as protein goes that make up color pigmentation. And this animal has tyrosinase still in it, which gives it that kind of cool carmine color. And unfortunately, again, she isn't said, so she's not going to glow beautifully. But if you wanna go check out the video that I did about albino boas, she is heavily talked about, and I go in a little bit more into detail about that. And you can see her when she's not uh, dull and icky looking. Sticking with that theme of the Greek alphabet, this is Upsilon. Upsilon is just a normal call albino female, and she's actually the mom of our very first boa litter that we produced in 2021. So this girl, just the normal call albino, you can see the difference between that sun glow, and I'll actually bring out, here, you know what, while we're just doing this right here, hang on one second. Let me show you what I was talking about with that coral. So, this is, so, here's Upsilon, mommy girl. This is Ro. This is actually Pi's brother. He doesn't have the hypo, which makes him a normal albino. He's not a sun glow like Pi. So you can tell, hopefully the camera picks it up, how much pinker and how much, and how much more pattern that Ro has versus Upsilon. And that's what happened when we used to have coral albino breedings. They would throw out, and then no matter what albino they came out, Really, if it was any animal that had any less pink than this, and even then he's fairly low expression to what they used to be, it would just be call albino, it wouldn't be a coral. So they're all still that call albino and they carry the gene for the albinism, but they just necessarily weren't a coral animal. But Ro here has quite a bit more pink to him that does carry that through. And actually he is the dad of what will hopefully be a really cool litter this year. But Upsilon here is just that normal call. So last year we paired her up with Church, which was our probable super ghost head albino. What that means is that it's a hypo and it possibly is a super hypo, which if you think about genetics with ball pythons and stuff, that means that every baby will throw hypo. Then visual anery type one and then pot and then het albino. We proved out that he was in fact not a super, so he's just a ghost head albino. So out of that breeding, we got some sunglows, we got some hypos, we got some normals, and we got some albinos, and every single one was het for anery, and every one that was an albino was het for albino. And this time, with Ro here, we'll be producing essentially the same litter, but with a different pairing. And I will be revealing that down the road, but I'm being sneaky and cheeky about it. But Upsilon here is really cool. She has a really fun backstory. I'm gonna put Ro back really quick. So we're gonna come back over here. And we're going to come back over here and we're going to talk about Upsilon a little bit more. Stack, let go of my neck, please. So Upsilon, when I was very first getting into breeding boas, I went to this place up in the foothills of Colorado. Let go of my face. 
um, and she's wrapped around my ponytail, so I guess this is my life now, that I thought I was picking up a T-positive boa. And I looked at it, and it was a Craigslist find, I'll admit that too. And when I was looking at the pictures that I was sent, it was not a super bright T-positive. It looked like it was just kind of like a dark, more caramely colored, maybe even it was mislabeled, and it might have been a boa woman caramel boa, which is... Uh, which essentially works in tandem with the sharp jean. Um, but when I went to go pick her up and I looked at how she was actually being kept, she was actually being kept in absolutely terrible conditions. And she wasn't in fact a T-positive boa or even a BWC or any other type of T-positive boa. She was in fact just this normal call that had multiple layers of stuck shed and dirty water and discoloration on her and she was just she was kept cold she had a small respiratory issue it was a whole thing and that's actually the same person that i ended up getting james and lily my doomerel boas pair from and my very first rescue bearded dragon they were all being kept essentially cold not being well kept for at all because the guy had lost interest in keeping reptiles and he moved on to I think it was he wanted to, he was manufacturing his own guns or something like that um so luckily we got them away from him um and then now we have upsilon here who proved out to be just a regular call albino who is an amazing little animal and i love her today and you are just so squirrely today aren't you guy i gotta love both okay so when i talked about that jungle this is what a true jungle or a more traditional looking jungle looks like this is kilo's sister we just call her jungle girl don't have a fun name for her. I probably should at this point. But this is a girl who is that nice jungle and she is actually possible het VPIT positive. So what that means is that their parents were both het. She inherited the trait. This girl maybe didn't. So she definitely got the jungle, that nice full chain linking, full stripe jungle, and Kilo didn't. But Kilo hit that T positive. This girl is only the possible het. So we actually have to breed her to prove out whether or not she is. And unfortunately, it will be a hat to a possible hat, but at least we'll have jungle and some other genes going for them in the process. She is kind of a cantankerous little butt, and she's actually giving me one of the worst bites that I've gotten from any of my snakes in the past. But she does pretty good once she's out, and she knows that I'm not food. Um, stop moving, you silly little girl. But I just want to show off this really cool, very nice jungle pattern. This is Deadwood. So Deadwood, we don't really know what she is. So if you look, you can tell that her pattern and her saddles, there's something going on. Like she's a really pale color, almost like a Pearl Island boa, but she's not a Pearl Island. Her size, the coloration and the saddles aren't necessarily that of a Pearl Island. What she was, was again, another Craigslist find. I'll admit it, uh, went to go pick someone up. This is from someone up in Northern Colorado. They picked it up from just a local reptile store and they just picked it up as just a regular female boa. And so when I saw her, I liked the weird oddball stuff. So went over there, they agreed that, you know, we do the whole uh, arena virus, IBD testing, all of that rigmarole, they agreed. We picked her up, made sure she was a girl, tested her for IBD, she's all good. Now she's been with us for about a year now, but there is something weird going on with her. Her pattern. We don't know exactly what she is. I've been told that there's something that's called a Kraken boa. There's this other thing called a Jaguar. Maybe she's just a really weird one-off. I'm not really sure. So we're going to hold on to her. We're going to grow her up for a few more years. And then we're going to breed her with somebody. And maybe that'll just end up being where she just has crazy reduced saddles and there's something going on. Or maybe she's possibly that Kraken thing where um, we reproduce her or pair her up with another Kraken or we put animals back to her down the road and then we prove out whether or not she's in fact a Kraken and this is just a, you know, essentially res a visual recessive or like a codom or something like that to this animal. All right, I can't talk about boa morphs and not bring him out. I will get yelled at. So Alpha, our IMG boa, he is 100% het for CAT positive. We have two girlfriends for him. Uh, they are a little bit smaller than him. One is just not growing as quickly. The other one is a couple years younger. So he will be paired to a CAT positive Motley and then a CAT positive Sunglow, which is the hypo CAT positive. Those are those two girlfriends that will be paired up probably 
not this year, but next year. They're just a little bit smaller. They come from the Central American locality, so they're a little bit smaller. So this guy here, he is six years old. So he's a little bit smaller than some of my other adult, even male boas, even though we slow grow all of them. But he is a little bit big for the girls, so we're just gonna let them grow out a little bit more. So as you can see here, he has, for whatever reason, one little spot of just stuck shed at the top, which is kind of annoying. But otherwise, you can see, so the IMG, it's that increasing melanin gene. As they get older, they're born, they just kind of look like really dark boas. Um, you, can, you can almost always tell whether or not a baby is born IMG or not, even if there's other morphs going into there as well. But as they get older, they just get blacker and blacker and darker and darker, both with sheds and as they mature. To the point where now, basically, there's just a little bit on his tail, his underside, and there's some little fleckings along here. And otherwise, he is almost pure jet black. He used to be a cantankerous little jerk. He's gotten a lot better, as well as we've come to an understanding to where when he's done, he goes back and that's about it. He did have, again, during the same time that happened with Pi, when we refreshed all other cages, the coconut that I put in there, I think the water was just a little warm, fogged it up. He smashed his face into the front, started to get a little swelling at the top of his face. So a cross-country reptile adventure tour that we went on last year ended up getting delayed by almost two full days because I needed to get him to a vet and that came first. And so that's why a couple of the little, like if you go and look at the, some of my reptile adventure videos and I'll try to remember to put the playlist right here. We ended up visiting quite a few different places including Reptile Rapture and Barchek's place that we had to cut some of that stuff out because we needed to make sure that we were taking care of this little jerk head right here. But just wanted to show off some of my bows today. And obviously I have more, but I just wanted to show off a few of them today. Some of them weren't shed, some of them weren't feeling it. And I'm just trying to make it just a fun little video where we just talk about bows and I just want to show off some of my cool animals. Realistically, I don't show off a lot of them all the time because I have so many. So every once in a while it's fun just to do a little show off video. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. I do plan on doing more videos about not only all of the boas, both the morphs and the true red tails, as well as plenty of other reptile content, both involving my own and other people's that have really cool animals as well. Um, if there's anybody in the Colorado area or in Wyoming or anywhere near that, uh, we will be doing another education event at the end of June. I believe it's June 25th and 6th where I will be presenting some really cool animals, both of my own, as well as a good friend of mine, and plenty of other really cool breeders and keepers, hobbyists, and professionals will be exhibiting some really cool animals. We're doing uh, educational presentations at the Show Me Your Reptiles vit, uh, show in Loveland, Colorado. So if anybody wants to try to make plans for that, you can come see me, I'll say hi. If uh, you show me that you're subscribed, you get a free gift if that's any sort of incentive to come through the door, as well as you'll be meeting some really cool animals. I probably won't be bringing Alpha with me because he's not fitting into uh, the animals that we'll be presenting, but you will see some amazing reptiles, both from myself and my friend and the other presenters, but it'll be a really cool uh, reptile expo. So that little fun, uh, that little fun freebie, uh, you're welcome, Mickey and Tamara. Uh, you're welcome for that one, as well as come see me there as well. Hope everyone's having a great day. It was really cool just to sit here and just talk about some of my little buttholes here. Hope everyone's having a great day again, and we'll check you next time.